This is Community Forum, a service of CAN TV. I'm Juan Carlos Hernandez. Our guests are Sid Smiley and Anna Sober from Arts Alive Chicago, a group whose focus is on the Northwest Side. They're here to talk about their work and vision for the arts in that part of the city and beyond. Welcome to both of you. Thank you very much. Well, thanks for being here. Uh, let's start off by talking about you uh, individually and how you came to Arts Alive Chicago, please. Uh, Anna, please. Um, well, first of all, thank you for hosting us. Mm -hmm. um, I've lived on the Northwest Side uh, since about 1974, and it's amazing to me how much culture and art there is there in mm -hmm. the neighborhoods, not in downtown Chicago. And mm -hmm. when Sid came to me with the opportunity of helping co-start uh, a new nonprofit to showcase the artists and the art that we already have in our neighborhoods, mm -hmm. I jumped on board. Okay, great. And our second guest today, uh, Sid Smiley. I love your, your last name. <laughs> um, thank you. I can't take credit for it, actually. It's my parents. Um, Arts Alive actually started with a girlfriend of mine, uh, in addition to Anna, um, mm -hmm. Jill Arena, who's a graphic designer, called me one Saturday morning and said, I hate these boarded up storefronts. Can we do something about it? Can we get some paint and do something? Mm -hmm. And I went door to door and collected paint that was going to go to a landfill from my neighbors and we went and painted storefronts. That very day, within hours, people started coming out of uh, storefronts and homes that were in the area mm -hmm. and were like, what, what's going on? Because this was kind of a neglected area mm -hmm. of the town. And they started sweeping and cleaning. Within a couple of hours, people brought us food and drink and we started to realize this has a huge impact. And it was, you know, pictures of fish and and flowers. It wasn't mm -hmm. anything meaningful. Um, and when two, three months passed, we realized we could do this and make a more significant difference in our neighborhood. And I started the nonprofit and collected a number of seven area residents who could help us out with their expertise, their photographers and graphic designers and um, different businessmen in the area. Mm -hmm. So it, it started from a need in the neighborhood for me to clean up and do what I can as an artist at this age to be mm -hmm. able to give back to your community mm -hmm. and to help mentor other up and coming artists and what they can do with their art beyond just designing the poster for the charity event um, right. is really meaningful. Wow, so th what I'm hearing from you is, well, that y it was just born out of a quick call and and you actually through because of that call and that concern uh, you helped bring an art arts group together and uh, it mushroomed from there or and absolutely okay. uh, I had no idea when we started that Saturday mm -hmm. that almost four years later we'd be talking about an organization that's done over 20 murals ourselves and mm -hmm. that has mentored students and had interns and helped with programs and, and classes and parades and all kinds of things. Well, tell me how that mentoring works. How, how do you, how do artists come to you? Do they, I guess they find you on the internet or they hear about you or they come from other neighborhoods or are they specific to that uh, area of the city? Well, mm -hmm. I think what we, First, what we did is we had to tell people about what we do, mm -hmm. and I'm the person. I'm, I'm not an artist. I have a son and a husband and a daughter who are both very artistic. Mm -hmm. um, and my son was actually one of the interns one summer for Arts Life Chicago. Mm -hmm. But we have to tell people about what we do, so we mm -hmm. communicate. We use the uh, networks we already have in place. So, in our area of the city, we have a lot of strong community groups, which all have newsletters and mm -hmm. ways to get the word out. And now, obviously, with social media with Facebook, et cetera. Um, we already have a lot of artists and creatives living in our neighborhood. They may have day jobs doing something else. Mm -hmm. um, and so when we started doing these different projects, people would come to us and say, hey, I want to do this, or can you help me do that, or can you give me information about doing this? So we basically became a clearinghouse of mm -hmm. information, mm -hmm. uh, matching up uh, various artists with uh, community groups, with organizations who wanted to do something, with churches, spaces, with spaces. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it kind of grew organically depending on what the need was in the area. One mm -hmm. of the lovely things about visual art is that it's visual. So mm -hmm. if you're out painting a mural, 
and most of the murals take a minimum of a week, usually more like three weeks by the time mm -hmm. you lay it out and paint it. You've got three weeks of being on a street where people, the first couple of times they walk past you and they're just like, I wonder if this is legal. A lot of people would stop and say, <laughs> "Well, they call the police. To do they that? call the police on you they, because they, they think you're yeah. you're graffiti." And, and yeah. mm -hmm. honestly, to look at somebody like me out there, I'm like, "Really? You really thought well, I would?" You never do, know. I would be <laughs> a rogue, and I'd be out there doing this. But in broad um, daylight, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> So mm -hmm. uh, being out there for three weeks, people stop eventually, and they start mm -hmm. talking to you. And so, what you doing? I, you know, um, one of my mm -hmm. favorite murals recently came out of a conversation with another mural project. We were working, and somebody stopped by and said, "My daughter's a scientist. My son walks to school through this, and mm -hmm. and also is interested in science. Have you ever thought of doing a science-based mural?" And one of the things that our board and our artists have all talked about is let's expand the meaning of what a mural is. Let's mm -hmm. look at legitimate art. Let's look at science. And let's look at um, things that enhance the cultural community of our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, so as a result of that, a science-themed uh, mural was painted next to a school. And it all came about as a result of a conversation with a schoolgirl that, that Sid had while she was painting on another project. So and in the course of painting mm -hmm. it, you would hear people come up and say, Mom, I know what that is. That's a DNA double helix. And, you know, so <laughs> the parents are enabling, mm -hmm. a the artwork is enabling the parents to have a conversation with their kids or other kids. You know, somebody mentioned one of the um, pyramids in it, mm -hmm. which was refracting light. It was meant to be a prism. Mm -hmm. But they were saying, oh, that's Illuminati. And, and to hear these 20-somethings be able to have this conversation about <laughs> what that meant was kind of like, interesting. Um, visual arts mm -hmm. on that level can create a dialogue um, mm -hmm. am amongst the passers-by and the community as a whole. What would you like to see? Mm -hmm. What embodies the characteristics that you would like to honor or feature? So mm -hmm. what in our part of the city we have a lot of viaducts because we have two railroad lines, we have a Kennedy Expressway, we have the subway. And what we've done is taken those viaducts and other public walls. They're usually grungy oh, and, and they're dirty. Nasty. And they're, they're full of a lot of nastiness that we're not even going to talk about on, <laughs> on TV. Um, it's not a welcoming mm -hmm. environment, let's right, put it that way. Not. So what happens is that you transform the walls with some paint, and you're basically creating a focal point for the community. Mm -hmm. um, people start taking pride in that area. It's a form of community building. They keep it cleaner. They create gardens they get involved, they work together. Mm -hmm. So it's just a start to something which then there's a domino effect that you create a real change. Mm -hmm. And you had asked about mentoring. So we do everything from, because uh, we now have like a mural 101. How do you do this? So um, you don't mm -hmm. give a man a fish, you teach a man to fish, right? right? right. So we do everything from just giving advice to mm -hmm. other groups or, or who want to paint a mural mm -hmm. to mentoring them to like walking them through the steps to actually implementing it because they don't know. They know they want something, but they don't or know they how don't to do it. Or they don't feel like they have the personnel who can give the time. Right. So, so mm -hmm. then we can organize a group of volunteers, uh, artists, a, a design in order to actually make it happen. And then the community gets involved in, in, an, in a way that it, that it is able to. Mm -hmm. And how do you attract these artists that help you in that mentoring? Just by being out there, um, mm -hmm. it, they come out of the woodwork. I, and some from, of my favorite. And from where? Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember which mural. Mm -hmm. We were painting one of the murals, and mm -hmm. a hooded guy came over and said, "Hey, you, how did you, you have permission to do that?" Yes. How would I get to do that? Well, talk to me. Send me a design. We'll get. We'll submit it to the board, see mm -hmm. if we can find funding and location. And we did. Mm -hmm. um, word gets out. Artists are desperately hungry to be able to find a way, a venue to express themselves. A lot of them have great ideas and images, don't know how to translate it into a mural. What do I do for surface prep? How do I protect it? Right. Um, how do I fund it? All of these kinds of things. And we also things. have people who uh, do work in advertising or are graphic designers or furniture mm -hmm. or set designers. And they've come out, they've turned out to be some of our most um, 
uh, competent volunteers. I mean, they mm -hmm. want to do something creative. Mm -hmm. So in their spare time or on weekends or sometimes they'll take vacation days, we have professional house painters and, and mural painters who this is what they do in the evenings. They want to come out and do something artistic. We also artistic. have a number of people who mm -hmm. really just love to do the prep work. The, the scraping of the walls and the sweeping and the weeding. They say, I don't want to paint. I'm not an artist. I can't paint, but let me do that. And I'm like, really? Really? You want to well, do the icky helping. stuff? They're helping. And they yeah. love it. And they love taking they're part ownership. Of it, right? Right, they're mm -hmm. part of something. We've like had it. a number of people who feel too old or infirm to be able to do it who now take care of. There's uh, greenery that grows mm -hmm. over a number of the walls. They clean that. They trim that. We've had gardens get planted at a number of locations. They weed the gardens and plant the gardens and water them and take care of them. So uh, community seems to just come up spontaneously when you start painting. I was mm -hmm. painting the police memorial mural and mm -hmm. less than a block away a metro train stops up in the air up on an mm -hmm. overpass and the conductor came by one night after painting and he said, I stopped my stop a little past and a little bit longer so people can watch what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, Okay, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and people started coming by and um, mm -hmm. having discussions. How do I get involved? If I had a design, my daughter loves to paint. Can she come and volunteer? So we do have a protocol, mm -hmm. um, so we can make sure that everybody. Right, but, but also through mm -hmm. social media. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, we have. Uh, you know, there's signs on our murals so people mm -hmm. can find us and we get messages. Hi, I'm an artist, I want to help. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so people come to us that way as well. You know, and another one mm -hmm. of the things, another part of the things that we do is mm -hmm. we also uh, hook up businesses and bi uh, property owners, building owners, chambers of commerce with artists or people who want to either to beautify their storefronts or their physical properties or to use their space to do some kind of art event in their mm -hmm. space. So we also connect uh, businesses with artists as well because let's say, you're, let's say your storefront's being graffitied all the time and you mm -hmm. know you want something on there but you don't know where to start. Right. right, and you had some, before the show we were talking about a, a case like that. Could, uh, tell us about that. On Belle Plaine, one of the walls that um, was just tagged on a weekly basis, we had one uh, record of 40 calls in one month mm -hmm. for the graffiti on that wall, and I suggested, Let, uh, let's do a community aerosol mural on that wall, and he said, no, I hate, I hate that, and mm -hmm. luckily, and the artist who I just referred to in the hoodie, mm -hmm. <laughs> he uh, led the program, and uh, it, we were saying it's it's a medium. It's just the paint. It's what you do with it that mm -hmm. you're having problems with. We had what we called block to block um, as part of Chicago Artist Month two mm -hmm. years ago, and did a community quilt. So everybody was invited to come and do a block of the quilt with paint to see mm -hmm. that it's not uh, the form. It, it it's not. Yeah, the so medium, we had children, teenagers, mm -hmm. adults, mm -hmm. and everyone could do whatever they wanted in and that, that square mural, mm -hmm. which is about ninety feet long, has never been tagged. Nor has almost any of our artwork been tagged, and it eliminated the need for somebody to go out and paint that wall on a daily basis. Now that building owner is one of our biggest fans, and he's written uh, lots of recommendations for absolutely this is the best way to go. It, it beautifies the community. Mm -hmm. All the people who worked on that, those little kids, you know, they point to their section of the wall when they walk home at, and <laughs> I did that. I did that. That's, that's, that's mine. That's great. That's great. Now um, we're going to take a look at, at some uh, images of murals that, oh. uh, that you've worked on, mm -hmm. and uh, you'll tell us about that as we go through them. That's the aerosol mural. That's, the, that's that. the one you were... That's the one, so wow. you can tell the block structure. Okay. Bill Wayna was the artist who led the project mm -hmm. along with Gabriel Cosiquillo, who were former taggers themselves, who are now married with children. And, <laughs> uh, and they've gone legit. And gone legit. <laughs> they've gone they, legit. Um, and they teach classes, actually, to mm -hmm. help kids get away from tagging, and uh, mm. aerosol to art is what they call it. How many people participated on this one? About 20, 22. And wow, one gal, bless mm -hmm. her heart, she was a high school girl. She was so sick, but mm -hmm. she was having such a good time. She had a tissue to her nose the whole time and kept, so I have one more, one more. <laughs> uh, this is the Forest Glen mural. Uh, one of mm -hmm. two, it's on both sides of the street. The Forest Glen Community Group mm -hmm. uh, 
contacted us to help them through the process. Mm -hmm. They put a call out. They had 14 artists respond, wow. and they selected this as one. That's their, beautiful. Their call mm -hmm. requested that it highlight the flora and fauna of the neighborhood. Um, and the seasons. And the four seasons. And, and seasons right. Mm -hmm. So this side of the mural is spring and summer, and the other is fall. Oops, there you go. Fall mm -hmm. and winter. Okay. And we had the whole community. Congressman Quigley came out and painted. Um, oh, wow. Alderman Arena, um, Bob Martwick. Mm -hmm. A lot of the dignitaries come out, and it's a wonderful opportunity to paint mm -hmm. shoulder to shoulder with them mm -hmm. and be able to talk about pigeon abatement and other kinds of things <laughs> that um, concern a lot of the area. Pigeon abatement, though. <laughs> that all these it's th very I important under <laughs> <laughs> Yes. This is the end of Watch, the police mural that mm -hmm. uh, Sid was talking about. It's at Montrose and Knox. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the left-hand side there, you see the names of all the fallen officers since the beginning of the Chicago police uh, And this is force. designed by Jill Arena, the woman who I started storefronts with. Oh, that, uh, wow. Yeah. And this was, again, we got a Facebook post saying, would you please consider painting a mural to honor mm -hmm. a fallen officer? And when we went for permission to do this, you have to contact UP or Metro, who owns the property, mm -hmm. and get a letter from the alderman and the community. And um, mm -hmm. he said you need to represent all the fallen officers. And this is a case of a building owner who, uh, it's the Klee Building, a historic building mm -hmm. at Irving, Cicero, Milwaukee, who there's a pedway to the parking lot okay. in back. And he's like, what can we do here to make this more uh, welcoming and more of a, a marker that people know? And this it. was mm -hmm. actually also done for Chicago Artist Month. We had a poetry walk where poets read different poems in different locations. Mm. And at this location, the poet was reading about running with her dogs in the morning fog. So mm. you can't see it in this image, but there's a number of um, 30 other dogs also sort of in shades of fog okay. <laughs> running. Well, um, I want to just go back and talk about the one for the fallen officers. Uh, how did the police department respond to that? We had a dedication that, I, honestly, if I get through it without getting teared up, um, mm -hmm. both the 16th and the 17th district police officers were invited, as were the families, to come and fill in the badge number of mm -hmm. the officer that they were related to or So were they, friends the with. families actually came and painted the, wow. the badge mm -hmm. number on so the wall. So we had the local Boy Scouts run color guard and, and bagpipes, and um, as it turned out, we had some foreign dignitaries show up also, and we had just a really powerful and moving um, dedication as each one of the officers had an opportunity to talk about their officer that they knew. Mm -hmm. I was just out there this summer touching it up. It had suffered some damage from snow blowers. Mm. And at middle of the afternoon on a hot summer day, a lady pulled into the lot and said, I, is this organized chronologically or how does this work? I said, yes, it's by date. It's all the officers who've died, 564 at the time, I think. And she found her grandfather's name. Her and grandfather. she started to tell me about how her grandfather had died in the line of duty. Mm -hmm. And I, it, it, you know, it always brings you back to how powerful a piece of art can be when it seems so passive. You know, mm -hmm. people who come and go to, it's right by the Blue Line station, it's right by an on-ramp to the expressway, who see it every day and go, oh yeah, I've seen that. Um, but to hear the stories of the people who, it's changed the way they feel about the neighborhood. We have a lot of police officers and firefighters who live in our neighborhood <coughs> mm -hmm. because of Chicago ordinances. And they felt like they were welcomed in a way that they and hadn't valued. felt and valued. Right, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, a, it's an enormous sacrifice if you think about it. Mm -hmm. and, and families don't forget. I mean, generations and generations, they mm -hmm. know about their, their relatives who've fallen. We people coming from Beverly and Pilsen and everywhere to be able to, um, to, paint. to add this to badge number to their fellow officer or family member, so. Wow, and what about the, well she's, uh, what was your friend's name? That she, she's Jill Arena. Jill Arena, she's the one that painted this mural? She designed it, she, she designed works it. full time. As um, The one mm -hmm. with running with the dogs was Jack Nakasena. He's a mm -hmm. graphic designer who works all the time. Mm -hmm. And he finally said, I, I don't think I can paint with a brush anymore. <laughs> so many of them use Just computers. Just the mouse clicks. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, we took the artwork and um, painted it ourselves and had community paint days where people were invited to come out and paint what it what yeah. they could read. Each, each of our murals is mm -hmm. uh, basically uh, we we solicit design. Sometimes a des an artist comes to us, mm -hmm. and just because they design it doesn't mean that they also 
execute it. Mm -hmm. They just submit the design. But we have another artist, Tony Sparrow, who lives in our area as one of our board members. And he's also created a lot of designs. And he actually um, goes out and paints them with a crew of volunteers. He painted mm -hmm. one recently this summer that was based on Polish paper cutting. And so mm. he contacted the Polish community through a number of different networks of librarians and paper cutting artists. And he, I think he ended up with a core of 22 artists who were all Polish who spoke and they kept saying, what, you did this and you're not Polish? And he's like, I know, <laughs> go figure. <laughs> but it became um, quite a source of pride and involvement mm -hmm. um, through the course of almost a month to paint that, I think. Right. Three weeks. So again, mm -hmm. it's all community building, and we try to uh, mm -hmm. create, we try to uh, make the art, artwork reflect the particular community because Chicago is a city of neighborhoods, right. and it's even block by block sometimes. So you you don't impose what you think should be somewhere. You want it to organically come from what the community wants, or reflecting the history of that community, so that people do feel like it's theirs. It's something that they can relate to. It's a point of pride for them. Mm -hmm. You mentioned earlier, uh, and you and I guess you I want you reminded me to touch on it. Uh, you have a protocol. Uh, uh, you say that you want the art to be inspired by the people there. How do you go about listening? Uh, how do it, and if uh, an individual comes and wants to work with you painting, what's the protocol that they uh, that they have to follow? Uh, it depends if it, they want to work on mm -hmm. everybody else's work or submit their own design. If they submit their design, we review it as Arts Alive and make sure it's something that we want to put our name on. And then there is a, um, a legal citywide protocol to get permission from whoever owns the property and the alderman. Um, there's a lot of high profile things that have happened in the city this summer to indicate that if you don't get the community support, it can um, not go so well for your artwork and your artists. Well, mm -hmm. for example, Union Pacific has its own set of rules. So it depends mm -hmm. on if you're painting a private wall, it's up to the okay. it's up to the property owner, right? They decide it's their wall. Mm -hmm. um, they can decide what goes on their private wall. Mm -hmm. If you're if you're painting on a railroad viaduct that, for example, belongs to Union Pacific. They, uh, they, their process is you have to submit a design to your alderman, the alderman where the viaduct mm -hmm. is. That alderman has to sign off on it, and then you sign a release with Union Pacific, and then you're good to go. Um, and then I believe Metra has a different protocol. And, uh, Relatively the same, same, but like the Forest Glen mural, mm -hmm. one side of the street was in Alderman Arena's ward, one side of the street was in Alderman Lorena's ward. Mm -hmm. So uh, you had to get permission from both of them, and they have their own rituals or forms each, of Each getting. alderman has their own process that they go through. Mm -hmm. So so basically that's a fail-safe for those uh, companies, mm -hmm. that if okay. you're painting something on their walls, it's not something that they're going to get in trouble for, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they approve it, their alderman there approves it, and then everyone's everyone's happy. But we very much like to have a chance to work with the artists and make sure that they actually know how to do what they say they can do. A lot of mm -hmm. people say, oh yeah, no, I got that covered. And then they don't prep the wall so the artwork won't last and the money that was spent and the time that was spent um, deteriorates. So we really do supervise long enough to make sure that they have the skill, the ability, um, and then support them You know, with, mm -hmm. do you want additional volunteers? North Mayfair just did a mural. Um, I didn't uh, add mm -hmm. a brush to it at all, but talked them through how to make sure you get quality paint, uh, how to prep the wall. Um, mm. They put out a call for artists. They ended up having a public vote and selected a design, and it's about halfway up, and they're now waiting for the artist to finish the work on it. So wow. um, it yeah. also depends who pa who's paying for the mural, right? Right. Um, uh, you help with some of that funding as a nonprofit. Uh, no, we don't. Mm. We're a nonprofit. We yeah, yeah. We, we welcome <laughs> your donations. <laughs> um, usually, we have asked as a fiscal agent for okay. some. Okay. Okay. Um, we do have the structure and recommendations. I'm mentoring some people down in Canaryville mm. on how to raise money for their mural that they want to do on the wall that faces their baseball park. But it's usually each group has to has to get donations mm -hmm. itself. So Forest Glen raised money from mm -hmm. the Forest Glen community. 
um, North Mayfair from that community. And it's a way of also reaching out to businesses and individuals and saying, hey, if this is what you want to happen in our community, we all have to pitch in. And finally, it's paint. And you know, there is a, a process that, you know, there's scraping, priming, we, we seal, we put up drip edges so that mm. all that goop doesn't come down. But you can transform a 120 foot wall for about $2,000, you know. Wow. Three thousand. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, the price has gone up. I love that sealant stuff. So, with the se mm -hmm. so, but if you're doing it with volunteers, you're able to make a tremendous impact mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. for three thousand dollars. Wow, that's awesome. We're running short on time, and it's been a great show. I wish we could do another two hours. Oh. Um, but very briefly, uh, in a short statement, what's your vision going forward from each of you? Uh, well, mine is just to continue uh, creating these different places of engagement mm -hmm. for people in our neighbors, uh, neighborhoods to understand how much art is already happening around them, that they don't have, it's right under their noses. Our job is to tell, tell them about it and to engage them because that's finally why we live where we live. We want to be connected with other people. We want to feel a part of the community and I think art and culture is part of that. Great. And well, I sit? wholeheartedly encourage expansion from all of us and, and more area to help more communities also discover how wonderful this process is. I would like to create um, a hub, a center that we mm. can uh, invite young artists and experienced mentors to share their skills and talents and have space. Nobody can afford space and, all and, the time and, anymore. An incubator. Of, an of incubator would be way cool. Oh, well <laughs> that would be great. Well said and let's hope it happens. Thank you. I Thank you very that. much. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for coming out. And to you, our audience, thank you for joining us. Community Forum is a service of CAN TV. If your nonprofit organization would like to work with CAN TV, call 312 738 1400 and ask for nonprofit services. Tune into Community Forum for local issues and concerns every Saturday at 7 30 p.m. on CAN TV 21. I'm Juan Carlos Fernandez. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm.